Okay, I just have a few more spots to fill in, you know, to kill whitey, to fill up my flat color. And then I can show you what we can do above and beyond flat color, right? But the first job is to fill it all in. So, what else do I need? I think I'm in the middle of doing the skin tones on the fingers and on the ears. I'm going to pick a slightly different skin tone, maybe. So I go to my paint bucket, hold down Option. I'll try this one. Drop it in. Got to be on the flat color layer. Yeah, I like that. It's a little pinker. Right. Now for her, her pants. I think I want her pants to be a dark green. Ooh, I don't have any greens. Use the magic wand, select her pants, on the top of her shoes, her little booties. And this onesie. I'm only working between the magic wand and the paint bucket tool. And then I hold down option on the paint bucket tool to turn it into a color selector. I choose a green. I want it darker than that. I can choose darker. Let's see. I think that's too dark. I kind of like the green. Okay, now what about the little kind of long johns that this Gorgon has. So it looks like he's wearing a shirt or something. So I'm going to go for a strong red. I like the primaries. Maybe the Sienna red. I did have it in the sketch, and then I just decided it was going to take too long to do line art of that, and it wasn't adding to the silhouette all that much. So instead of the snakes, I just outlined these little emphasis marks, right? Yeah, so you can, you can make, you're not a slave to your sketch, right? You can make decisions on the fly, and they could always be added in. And then I want an even deeper red for this background part of the pajamas. And this is kind of like shading because if it's the same pajama color and making it darker would mean to like be adding a shadow. But you know what? I'm, I'm doing it. They're self-contained. I can do what I want. So I still consider it flat color because they're, they're single shapes all filled in with one flat color. Now let me show you how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to select the color I had, and then to just get a darker version, I can select something from another palette that's darker, but, which that's a nice option. But if that's not there, I can always just modify the color I've selected and push it a little bit darker, or push it a little bit brighter, push it in a direction. So just because you have the palette doesn't mean you need to stick with that, but you can use it to start your selections. In the same way, I'm going to select this color, for the main, and I want something like that for here, but maybe I'll modify it slightly. So first I select it. Come on. With the magic wand. I can't recommend locking your layers enough, especially in Photo P, which can, can lag sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to set it up really simply. So you really only need three layers. And then if you have color reference, four layers. But yeah, you can, you can close and simplify and merge together anything you might need. Okay, you'll find that when you get to about this point of your flat coloring, it gets a little bit trickier 
because now you're trying to fill in shapes between other fully filled shapes. And that's only tricky because you're trying to figure out what colors make sense and don't pull a lot of focus. So sometimes you have to slow down a little bit, but you want to get all of them. Even the things that you think should be filled in with white, you want to pick a color to fill them in. That's just slightly off white. Okay, this kind of belly, let's try maybe this color, kind of grays. Some of my favorite colors for digital coloring are chromatic grays. So they're, they're almost just grayscale, but they'll just be pushed a little bit towards one hue or another, like bluish grays, greenish grays, reddish grays, yellowish grays. That's a nice way to think of them too. They work really well as flat colors. Yeah, that's nice. The power of chromatic gray. Nope, don't like that. That's better. Mustard yellow is also a often underutilized color. And remember, we're just trying to kill whitey. We're just trying to get these shapes filled in. And always alter them later. And if you're a flatting artist, it doesn't matter at all what you choose to fill them in as long as they're distinct from the other colors around them. All right, all I'm missing now are the toenails, the inside of the eyes, the inside of those eyes, and then these little marks. And maybe for the time being, well, let's see. I'll just fill them all in with the same thing. Nope. So make sure you're selecting from your vector line art layer, not from your flat color layer. So these are all my remaining shapes, I think. And I'm going to fill them all in with a very pale blue. Up, 
and then got to kill all the whites. There are two left over, running for cover. Fill those in. I'll use that same light blue. And then I think I'm done with my flat color. So let's check. How do you check? Deselect, save. Make sure you know where you saved to. Check that it updated. There it is. Full color. Very nice. Now notice when I zoom in, that distance of the little halo, the anti-aliasing, is only one pixel. But it looks a lot bigger than that as I zoom out. That's what's called a more effect. That's just the computer letting you know that there is a variation there, but it's exaggerating it, exaggerating it. So it's going to look good when printed, but if we want to take care of that, I'll show you how. But how do we check that we got all of the whites? So I'm going to turn off my color reference, and I'm going to duplicate my blank white background, and then I'm going to say edit, Fill with black. And then you can see with your black line art completely subsumed into the black background if there's anything that you wanted to fill in that you didn't fill in because now it would be filled with black. And I think I've got it all. Right? This is also not a bad way to check your flat color. If it looks good on black, it looks good on white. Then check if it looks good on gray. So make a new background layer and say edit fill with gray. Now, I'm not in love with these, but they're a good start, right? And then it's so easy to make changes. So for instance, I can take now my, I can lock all of these background layers, by the way. So only my flat color, my cheese layer is editable. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my uh, paint bucket and any colors I don't really like I'm just going to replace so I'm going to warm that up I'm going to warm this up this up and this color this color I don't love especially on the gray this is too blah steel purple maybe put that there See, and then this collar, maybe this collar needs to be this color. Yeah, it's a little bit more interesting. Yeah, okay. This kind of works. If I want to pick a totally different color for something like the nose, the insides here, it's all on this flat color layer. It's all so easy to work with. That's why flatting is so important, because you can just swap them out. Come on. There we go. And then, of course, you can do, do that until you're happy. You know, find your different variations until you're happy. Yeah, I kind of like that. Often, simplicity is, is best. You want your most contrast where the colors, or you want your most color and your most contrast where you want the eye to go. So you can simplify it in other places. And it looks a little bit better on gray. And then how does it look on white? It looks all right. Okay, now I'm going to save it. There is more we can do than just flat local color. 